so I'm at the Lux dealership to buy a thermostat. But I brought my camera in just for this reason. So yeah, because of that, this is the coolest Lexus dealership. I don't think there's any of those left for sale. This thing's been there for years. No one's ever going to buy it. <laughs> the prices are only going up. The dealership probably is just going to keep raising the price. You saw it. It's at four fifty-five. Uh, the reason I came here... Beefy OEM thermostat gasket. So yeah, I'm going to change those today. By the way... That is the greatest Toyota ever built. I don't care about your Pupra. I don't care about your Mr. Pooh. I don't care about your Celica. Nothing's better than an LFA. Period. Here's the Rock Auto thermostat, which says is OEM. And here's the actual OEM thermostat. Look at the size difference, dude. What the actual hell? This thing looks military grade compared to this puny thing. I have a feeling that this is causing all my issues. Also, I had it installed upside down. Apparently, this little hole here that you see there, that's supposed to go... Oh, and it's stuck collapsed right now. Yeah. But that's because I overheated it with a torch. So, that little hole is supposed to go at the top, and I always had it at the bottom. That helps bleed air. So, I'm going to stick that guy in, and refill the system, re-bleed it, and we'll see what happens. This should be done. I also installed the expansion tank. Got a little angle iron here, and then I just drilled it. Oh yeah, and I cut the f hole here, and then from that. And then I drilled a little hole, there's a little pinch weld there. Drilled a hole there, and this guy's solid, so proper expansion tank is in. So now all I gotta do is do this crazy hard install. Here we go, this is how you do it. Okay, so you hold it. Boom, that's done. There you go. That's how you install a thermostat. Oh wait, I forgot. Okay, there we go. And that's how you install the thermostat. Thank you for watching. For more expert tips, tune in next time. <laughs> Alright, so I got the whole system bled. Everything's good. Temperature's staying at 187 now, which is the lowest it's ever been. So, I think it's working pretty well now. I let the car idle for a good, like, 15, 20 minutes, I think. Everything's looking good. Got the... Expansion tank filled up, so when it cools off, it should suck it in. I also moved this guy over here, because I think the heat from the engine bay was making it uh, not work, because it kept turning on and off, on and off, when, it, when the engine bay would get hot. So, yeah. Next step, new hood pins. So you can see I'm already removed the old ones. I got new ones in. I just need to get them mounted. I got legitimate arrow catch pins or whatever they're called. Arrow catch, arrow latch, something like that. But yeah, these are sick. See, they're all they sit flush on the hood. And you just push that button, and they pop out. No more cables, no more pins to lose. It's gonna look so much cleaner. So I just gotta cut a bigger hole. See that? I already marked the hole. I use this as a template. So just gotta cut the hole out. And then 
uh, drill new holes, get these mounted. It's gonna be sick. I can't wait. I'm really excited to put these in because this is gonna look way better. When I get the hole saw, drill that out, drill that out, same thing over here, and then just angle grind those two lines and it should be in perfect shape. So alrighty. Here we have it. I let the sun set because it was too hot outside. So the sun is now gone. You can start cutting this. So I got my hole saws right here. Figure out what size fits. Hopefully I think this will be the biggest one too. Ooh, it's too small. So that one is going to have to get a little bit of grinding to fit. But for the top, I think this will be just fine right here. So set that up. Drill the holes for the bolts. Sick. Only problem is now they don't line up with the old holes at all. Which I was expecting because obviously it's way different. So this one is way off. Like you can't even see the headlight support there at all. This one, not so bad. It's just a little bit for the further up. But as you can see they're on an angle like that. So hopefully there's enough wiggle room in the design to make it, you know, allow the pin. So I'm gonna, I don't know, I gotta figure out how to mount these. Let's see if I can figure something out. So yesterday, the camera died, and it got too dark to film, but I got it done, even though it took an absolute 
way too long. And it was a pain in the ass, but I got it done. Here it is. And it looks freaking dope. The hood is not going anywhere. And the latches work perfectly. There we go. Here's my uh, awesome job that I did. This one's not so bad, but this makes me want to do a tube front end. <laughs> you know what? I don't need to, but I really want to. HPS plugs came in. I'm going to go grab those for that. I need to drain the coolant a little bit just to get the water level down from there. And then refill again. I'm kind of getting tired of draining and refilling this coolant. But yeah, at least that's done. And it looks sick. Also got to figure out what I'm going to do with that. I don't know what I'm going to do there. That sucks. <sighs> Sweet. Alright. Quick little swap is done. That's the big upgrade over that. Only lost like a drop of coolant, so I'm not even gonna worry about refilling it because I'd probably lose more if I open this. So I'm gonna let it be. There's only like a little bit that came out, and then it can just suck up more if it needs to from the reservoir, which is actually working. So here's how I know it was working. I had it filled all the way. See that pipe? The water level was right to that top of that pipe because it overflowed. And it's now gone. It's now way down, almost at the bottom. Which means it's working. It's not at the bottom, but it's like halfway. So, radiator cap is working. See, hose is not collapsing, so we're good. Alright, it's going to be it for this one. Man, I love working on this thing. It's all these little things now. Next big project is... ABS delete and new brake lines. New 25 feet stainless steel brake line. So it never rusts again. It's gonna be great. I'll be doing that next most likely. I just need to get one more of these brake line tees. These are off of like Celica's, Corolla's. You can I get I get these at the junkyard. I only have one left though. But every time I go to the junkyard, which isn't very often, I grab as many of those as I can find. Yeah, those work great for teeing off brake lines, so how I'm going to do that is pretty simple. I'm going to have a T right here for the front brake line, so I'm going to have one brake line going that one that way, one brake line going to the other side, and then I'm going to have this rear brake line go all the way to the back of the car, and then I'm going to have it tee off at the back. Can't wait to remove all this, so all this is going to be gone. The accumulator, whatever that is, all that stuff, and this huge block. Everything's going to be gone. It's going to make the engine bay look so much cooler. So much cleaner. It's going to be sick. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you on the next one. What the hell? Yo, get out of my hood. What are you doing? Get the fuck out of here. What is it doing? This is fiberglass. America, America, America. Do you have your passport?